here is a problem on AC circuits. It's kind of small, so let me read it to you. It's a pretty easy problem. I mean, pretty straightforward to read. Hair dryer, power rating of 1200 watts. That's pretty normal. Those hair dryers use a lot. 120 volt RMS source. What's the resistance of the heating element? You, I mean, for the most part, a hair dryer is just a big resistor that gets hot. What is RMS current, and what's the maximum instantaneous power? Okay, so let's just review real quick. Suppose I have a DC circuit like this. There's my hair dryer. Some power source, I'll call that V0, and that's R, and there's gonna be a current I. And so I know that using Ohm's law, I mean the loop rule, V0 minus IR, equals zero, so I know that. We also know that the power from this resistor is going to be I times the voltage across that resistor, now, which is just going to be V0, so it's going to be I V0. Now, you could also uh, replace this I, I could solve this for I and I get V0 over R, and if I put that in right here, I could get V0 squared over R. That's the same thing. Or if you wanted to, I could solve this for V0, which is IR, and I get I squared R. Those are all the same thing. That's power. Now, what if I replace this with an AC source? And we'll call this V as a function of T. It varies, right? And let's just say V as a function of T equals uh, V0 sine omega T. So the, this is the changes with time. That's just some frequency, angular frequency. So it changed with time. And if I plotted that, it would look like this. I'm going to try to draw a nice sine wave like that. Okay, so this is V and this is T. But at any given instant, I have some voltage and this still works. I can replace this V0 with V. I can say V is a function of T minus I R equals zero. But if the resistance is constant and the voltage is changing, the current has to change too. Now, what if I want to calculate the power? Well, I can use any of these, these methods. Um, but the important thing here is that I is going to be equal to, since this has to be true, it's going to be V as a function of time divided by R. Well, I have that over here, so this is just V0 over R sine omega T. So they both have the same function of time. They both have the sine omega T. Now if I find the power, power is IV, that's just going to be this times this, I get V0 squared over R sine omega T. Now, that's the power at any given instant. But what about the power rating? I want the average. And so here, oh, this is sine squared. So here, if you square the sine omega T, it looks like this. And it's not, that's not a very good picture like that. It's always positive. And it does have some points where it's zero there. The current and the voltage are both zero. Current voltage are both zero. Um, and it turns out that if we average this, you get one half. So the average of sine omega t is one half. And that's where this RMS comes from, right? Because if I take the square, if I get uh, the voltage, the sine of omega t squared over a period is a half. So what's the average of sine omega t? Well, it's zero because it goes up and down, but we, but for just one part of it, it's one over the square root of two. And that's what that RMS is. So if I use V RMS, that includes the sine omega t in there. So I can say P equals uh, v, v squared, V RMS squared over R, and that is my power rating. So that is 120, uh, 1200 watts, and I know this is 120, so I can solve for R. So R is going to be equal to uh, the RMS voltage, 120 squared over 1200 watts. 
and I get, let's put that in my calculator, clear, can you see that? Yep. 120 squared divided by 1200. And I get 12 ohms. Now, the next part. What's the RMS current draw? So, again, I already did this. V is a function of T uh, minus I R equals 0. So, I is going to be equal to V as a function of T uh, over R, which is going to be V0 over R sine omega T. Now, the average of this V0 sine omega t average is equal to V RMS. So the RMS current is just going to be the RMS voltage divided by I. So I RMS is going to be the RMS voltage 120 over 12 and that's 10 amps. I did that one in my head. What is the maximum instantaneous power? Okay, so now let's say this. Uh, I want to find this, let's say I is a function of T equals I z zero sine omega T. And I said that the RMS, I RMS, which is sort of like the average, is I zero, and then the average of sine squared is one half, so the average of sine is one over the square root of two. So now I want to find that. I just need to multiply uh, I0, which is the max. It's going to be the square root of 2 times I RMS. And that is, get out the handy dandy calculator, clear. Uh, I know that's 10. So it's going to be 10 times the square root of 2. And I get 14.1 amp. The end. Was that fun?